Hi scientists, welcome. My name is Leroy. I'm one of the scuba divers here at the California Science Center. And today I want to make you feel a little less stuck at home. I'm in front of the Kelp Forest Gallery. I'm going to tell you all about how we feed our animals here, the different types of food we use, the different techniques we use, and even have you come along on one of the scuba dives and see for yourself. Now, all the food that we feed our animals, we get from the same source that local restaurants get their seafood from. So it's frozen, sustainably caught, and we feed a large variety of food. We have, and you can see in here, clam, uh, fish, sometimes there might be shrimp or squid in there. So we really try to give our animals a well-balanced diet. In our pink container, same type of food, except we have little pieces of vitamins inside. And that's just to supplement the nutrients that our fish need to stay healthy and, and happy. Now, to get this food to them, for the most part, we use plastic tongs and that's just so we can individually target feed the food out to the animals that need it. With that said, let's come and see for yourself how we do it. Let's get ready and go scuba diving. All right, scientists, here I am. I have my scuba gear on. You can see, I've got my food container, vitamins, and my tongs. I think we're ready for the feed. Let's dive on in, follow me. The first task that the scuba diver does is to set two hanging distractions. These are feeding containers that hang in the middle of the water. When fish gently nudge the distraction, small pieces of food falls out. This is a great form of enrichment for our fish as it encourages them to problem solve. This allows the majority of fish to be distracted while our divers focus on target feeding our more shy individuals. Similar to the hanging distractions, another way we feed is with a method called broadcast feeding, where we feed out small pieces of frozen fish and gel cubes with a birch bottle. This is a great way to feed a large school of fish all at once. You can really tell they're hungry today. Some of our fish, like the yellowtail, a very fast fish, get target fed. They have been trained to recognize targets or shapes that we place in the water for them to know where we will be stationed to feed them. Our leopard sharks are also target trained to recognize this unique shape. It lets them know when and where their feeding station is. Leopard sharks naturally eat shrimp, crabs, and other small animals hiding in the sand. As you can see, these sharks are majestic animals that eat small fish and not at all the scary monsters that movies make them out to be. Here I am feeding our black croaker, another type of fish that we individually target. Here is our female sheephead, a very smart and curious fish. Sheephead have very strong jaws that they can use to break open the hard shell of a crab, spiny sea urchin, or even a clam. An important job of being a scientist is making good observations and to collect data. Here is a video of my dive buddy, Andrew, feeding our four horn sharks. He makes careful observations on which shark gets what food and vitamins, and then records this information on an underwater slate. 
This helps us keep our fish healthy by tracking each fish's diet. Horn sharks lay eggs in the shape of a screw. The mom hides these eggs in between the rocks. Let's see if we can find one. Here. It looks just like a piece of algae, doesn't it? The halibut is a very well camouflaged ambush predator. He waits patiently for a meal to swim by. Wow, look at how fast that was. Round rays are adapted to camouflage very well by burying themselves in the sand where they find small pieces of fish and crabs to eat. Andrew carefully feeds them using a very thin specialized hump. That's it, scientists. I hope you're feeling a little bit less stuck at home and you enjoyed this episode of Stuck at Home Science. See you soon. Be sure to visit our website Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. for more Stuck at Home Science activities.